What is up, homies? Welcome to another trailer reaction from Heroes Reforged. We are reacting to the official trailer for Blue Beetle. Mexcellence has arrived in the DC universe. <laughs> yes, it has. And Adam, before we jump into it, we should probably acknowledge, where's our buddy Augustine? Why isn't he here? We have oh, yeah. to get that out of the way and then That's tell right. everybody and then we can watch the movie trailer. Augustine's out of town. He's in Boston for a couple days. It was his birthday. So yes. if you haven't wished him a happy birthday on social media, go do that. Yeah. Um, people probably are also asking, like, where's your Mandalorian episode? We recorded it and there was no audio. So Hector and I are going to have yes. to redo that one. Yes. And uh, we're going to be watching Mandalorian alone this week, unfortunately, because of that. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of a bummer that we that we can't use that footage. So be patient. Okay. It'll be it's, here. It's, it will be here. It's the episode apparently directed by Bryce Dallas Howard, which is awesome. But mm -hmm. it's it's not the finale. So we're going to have Augustine back for the finale and everything. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. we got a bunch of great free stuff on YouTube. If you're not already checking out our Patreon, go ahead and do that because mm -hmm. that's where the good shit is and that's how you that's can support right. us. That's so right. do it. That's right. <laughs> uh, I also have a little bit of a sunburn, so don't mind me. <laughs> hey, uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> nice. You ready to check out this trailer? Yeah, man. I'm very excited about this. Me too. Me too. I can't wait. Uh, all right. Here we go. In three, two, one, go. Excuse me, Mr. What? Windows? Nah. You finished scraping the gum off that lounger or what? Oh. <laughs> Great. Great. Everything right now feels so out of reach. You always land on your feet, bro. You're Hyman. Hyman. They don't get out much. <laughs> I just want to rap. Jenny? God, I bet you life. But do not open it. You went in to get a shop, and all you brought back was a hamburger? Okay, I don't think it's a burger. You haven't looked? Oh my god. What the hell is that? The belly burger. It's the scarab. How did you get it to do that? I think he likes me. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is this hair and beard that George Lopez is sporting? It's great. Oh my god. This ain't what you want. Sick, dude. That looks great, dude. Oh, that's clean. Oh, that's clean. Oh, what? Oh, that oh looks my great, god. Dude. Oh, my space. Free entry system. Oh, whoa, the mask like moves when he talks. This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. What is going on? Oh, my god. <laughs> called the scarab. It's some kind of world-destroying weapon. It's designed to protect its host. Sometimes it does what you want, and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Hey, man, gonna kill people, dude. <laughs> I, I, I think I cut a bus in half. The scarab chose you, but it belongs to me. Okay, Susan Sarandon. Oh, yeah. All right. The low you feel for your family makes you weak. I just wanna rock. Oh, damn. <laughs> the universe has sent you a gift. And you That's the bug. What you're gonna do That's the that. bug, man. Yeah. That's Ted Ford's vehicle. Whatever you can imagine, I can create. Oh, damn. Let's party. Oh, that's so anime. Oh, yeah. get it. Nice choice. <laughs> oh, my God. That was straight up Power Rangers shit right there. Yeah. That was dope. <laughs> it's like Batman stuff. Batman's a fascist. There you go, George. There you Film go. Film for IMAX. <laughs> wow. Damn. And there we go. promoting the comics. There yep. you go. I just reread Infinite Crisis in preparation for this exact thing. Oh, Nicely nice. done. Dude, that looked fun dude it was colorful as hell yeah it's giving me like you know how like how colorful the shazam movies are in comparison mm. to the rest of the dc extended universe it was like that it also gave me black panther and shang chi vibes not just because there's yeah. a bus involved but the sort of like <laughs> fish out of water element to it with yeah. with this with the weapon like shang chi has the um the 10 rings that he's got and then black panther with the sort of like cool nanotech you know but also being very colorful and being very like exuberant and and yeah. um, just like really cool well designed so yeah. uh yeah it seems like a different origin obviously than the comic books which involves like ted cord and booster gold and batman and all the stuff that they're not doing in this but what are your mm -hmm. what are your first impressions on this adam well that's i think the interesting part is that the the there's obviously at the end there's a reference to batman 
But yeah. it definitely feels very much like a self-contained story that it's just a DC movie that has Blue Beetle in it. It's not a it's not a like interconnected DC film, which right. given everything that's sort of going on and, you know, this is going to be sort of the first movie after The Flash that takes place in a quote unquote reset DC universe. Yeah. We also have no idea actually how much of that reset plays into this movie, whether or not it's something that's acknowledged, because I think this movie was already in production and shooting when all of these like change of hand things were happening. So, oh, sure. Oh, I think sure. we're going to have to wait to see exactly whether or not that has a hand in anything. Yeah. And if it's just going to be a, a, a Blue Beetle movie, because originally it was supposed to be an HBO Max film. So what's yeah. to say that? On HBO Max, you know, for HBO Max, it was just meant to be a movie that's sort of like a one-off of sorts that if it has sequels, it is mostly just a self-contained story. Now, we know that they're doing a mm -hmm. Booster Gold HBO Max series. Will they retroactively right. try to make this fit with that? Who knows? But it looks right. fun. I love Cobra Kai, so seeing Shola Meridueña in this role is really, really cool. And it's a different type of a character. You know, it's a character that not a lot of people know a ton about. So I'm yeah. excited to see what they do with it and what this character brings to the live action DC universe. I agree. And I love what you said that like it is it, like they've been promising from the beginning with this that it's going to be self-contained and it mm -hmm. looks like that. I just didn't know exactly what the what like the tone was going to be, what the yeah. vibe was going to be. And this yeah. looks very fun. Yeah. Very kid and like young people friendly, which I think is the absolute direction to go. Get those Cobra Kai fans in here. Get those Cobra Kai. But that little move, those little moves that he's yeah. doing that were like straight, like yeah. Kamen Rider Power Rangers. I was like, dude, I love this. If they're letting, again, because going back to like Green Lantern, that was always sort of the, the cool appeal of Green Lantern is, mm -hmm. is a character who has powers based in like imagination. And yeah. if that little moment, it rings true to Blue Beetle of like anything you can imagine, I can create in terms of like the armor and the tech. That's a kid's like dream come true. That's just like totally. the coolest shit like Star ever. Kid. So, so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like star, star kid, kid. <laughs> absolutely yeah like this gives me those vibes of like star kid or that movie flight of the navigator i think it was mm -hmm. he's very like 80s like like oh i got powers from outer space and i have yeah. to go and you know and do whatever but going back to like it being self-contained it feels like that it reads like that i'm glad there's a batman reference in there because it's it's still mentioning it and like you know paying lip service to it in case right. they in case they do ever want to fold that in and and do whatever but that self-containedness does feel like and i was going to ask you too adam do you happen to know in terms of like the production history of this movie if this was ever intended to come out before the flash but but it's been shifted now to after the flash because we just mm -hmm. learned with shazam fury of the gods the director david sandberg said that like somebody asked him like why were there changes in the shazam suit from movie one to movie two and he goes well originally we were going to come out after the flash and i was just like okay if the universe is being reset that'll be why these suits look different mm -hmm. and it kind of gives you a, a, an idea of like how much the flash events really may affect or not affect the rest of everything that was in motion you know what i mean yeah and then david sandberg was like but then since we're coming out before the flash i'm just like it's magic like it's just magic that made their suits different which is fine but but mm -hmm. uh yeah i mean you're looking it up right now i don't know if blue beetle was supposed to come out i think the day was august 2023 since they announced it Okay. I think and, there may have been some questions whether or not it was going to be 2022 or 2023, but I'm pretty right. sure that August was always the intended date for it. And I'm pretty sure that it's always felt like since these hands have been changing and since fans of this franchise have kind of been following like what exactly is going on behind the scenes, mm -hmm. that like even James Gunn, who's now the, the co-president of DC Studios, said like, well, the real first initial movie and the new thing is going to be the superman movie they're making superman legacy it kind of does feel like some of these projects may be sort of stalling not in a bad way but just like focusing on their own thing mm -hmm. before they directly decide to jump into okay now we have this is our superman this is our batman this is our wonder woman these who these, these are who these characters are because yeah blue beetle is a character who interacts with some of those bigger Justice League characters, you know, and, and yeah. he is a character who interacts with Booster Gold, and he is a character who's connected to this legacy of Ted Kord, and before mm -hmm. that, Dan Garrett. So I'd love to see how this movie will eventually uh, do that. But it's sort of like, uh, it's probably best that these movies, this movie, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, maybe the upcoming Aquaman movie, are just kind of seemingly doing their own thing until right. that infrastructure gets set up. Because I was, as I'm watching this trailer, I was thinking about how like, you know how Tom Holland's Spider-Man was introduced in a Captain America movie? Mm -hmm. Like there's no Batman franchise set up right now that would be strong enough to bring in 
do you know what I mean? To introduce a blue beetle in like yeah. Batman three, here yeah. comes a blue beetle character. And then we're spinning him off into his own movie. They're just like starting with his own movie. Yeah. And, and, um, but it could again, work in everyone's benefit because it's uh, there's baggage involved with being a fan of DC uh, superhero universes and Marvel mm-hmm. superhero universes. Like, it, you know, you don't want it to feel like homework right. for an audience. You want it to feel like, dude, just check out what you're interested in. Yeah. And if, if you watch a thing, and they mention a character and you're like, well, that seems interesting. Then just go check that out. Like mm-hmm. that's how the comic books work when they're working at their best. That's how Jaime was introduced in the comics. So, but I'm just rewatching it, dude. And it just looks like a good time. And this yeah. looks great. Dude. It does look good. Yeah. And I guess according to this, this entry that I'm reading in January, James Gunn said the film would be disconnected from the previous DCU and it could mm. be made a part of the new DC universe. So maybe that's still undecided. Listen, you know that that the same at sort of questions were probably asked for Shazam. Yep. And I know fans were asking that question. And David Sandberg kind of said, like, dude, if the movie doesn't make money, they're not going to focus on a sequel. Like, why yeah. would James Gunn pause all of the work he's doing on Superman Legacy to try and reconfigure and actually figure out how a Blue Beetle sequel or a Shazam sequel or an Aquaman mm. sequel is going to factor into his stuff when he's like, I'm focused on that stuff. Yeah. If these movies do well, we're going to bring in Sholo and George Lopez and this whole cast, mm-hmm. but this movie has to do well. So Latinos, yeah. we got to show up. Uh, show Latinos, up. Show we got to show up. So, <laughs> show up. you know, we got to show up. We got to support. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Adam, before anybody gives us a hard time, I'm yep. rewatching it silently. I just caught that when they're in that lab, you see the two first Blue Beetles. You see their suits. You see ah. Ted Cord Blue Beetle. You see Dan Garrett. So there you go. Before you get up our asses, we just watched this for the first time. We're not frame by framing it, okay? Yeah. But it's awesome. And there you I'm go. very happy to see that stuff. Very happy. <laughs> but of course, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about this official look at Blue Beetle? Will you be seeing in theaters? Hopefully the answer is yes. Go out, rally, support. And uh, yeah, any other thoughts, theories as to what you think could happen or whether or not you think it'll connect to the future DC universe? Let us know. Subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next reaction.